Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. Now today I'm filming this video not 24 hours after the sad announcement that Buckingham Palace made yesterday in which they made us aware that His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, had died at the age of 99. Now in this country we recognise Prince Philip for his character, his personality, his sense of humour and of course his remarkable devotion to duty. He was married to the Queen, I believe, for 73, 74 years and was her consort during the entirety of her long reign as monarch of this nation and, of course, of the Commonwealth. Now, Prince Philip was not only the public figure that we, we know as the consort, but, of course, before his marriage, he was a naval officer who served during the Second World War was decorated for gallantry. He received the mention in dispatches for his activities at sea. Uh, and then when he became consort, he went on to have a very successful uh, period where he set up things like the Duke of Edinburgh's award, which changed the lives for probably millions of children. So we mourn his loss, absolutely. And it will be a loss which will, you know, we will feel keenly in this nation and around the world. Now, it's also fair to say that Prince Philip was a very stylish man, uh, but his style was in the truest tradition of an English gentleman, which is remarkable, really, because being born in Corfu, he was actually Greek by nationality, but I think we could say he was British through choice. And his style was that sort of style which goes unnoticed. The word restraint is really written over the way he presented himself. Now, of course, when he was doing official duties, wearing his military uniform and so on, you know, pomp and splendour were, you know, sort of glittered all over him. But when you saw him in his casual periods, or perhaps when he was in less formal periods, he certainly cut the dash as the traditional British gent for me. And I think he was uh, quite an aspirational figure in many ways when it came to style. Now, we know how Prince Philip achieved that style thanks to the Royal Warrant Holders Association. Now, for those who are not familiar with Royal Warrants, when a manufacturer or a supplier um, has been providing services or products to the royal family, for a period not less than five years, they can apply for what's called a, war a royal warrant, which is official creditation, which shows that they are uh, a supplier to the royal household. Now, this is a very exclusive club because only three members of the royal family are allowed to grant a royal warrant to a supplier or a manufacturer. The monarch herself, the queen, Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, the heir apparent, and the consort, in this case, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. So in total, there are only 816 warrants which are issued uh, to all manufacturers, suppliers, providers of service that, that serve the royal household. And the Duke of Edinburgh only granted 35 warrants during his time. Or, his, or 35 warrants were in operation at the time of his death yesterday. So it was a very exclusive club that Prince Philip chose to provide his personal attire and various other things that they provided to the royal household. So let's have a look at what manufacturers and suppliers in relation to style that Prince Philip graced with his royal warrant. Now, of course, when you think of a traditional British gentleman, you think of the suit that he wears because it is the most visually apparent part of his outfit, which is most obvious when you meet them. And the Duke of Edinburgh was nothing but always well-dressed and well-tailored. And he didn't go to any of the big houses on Savile Row. For him, he selected a tailor called John Kent, who was a man who apprenticed on Savile Row uh, and was a very, uh, is, remains an exceptionally well-regarded tailor who operates now in a small uh, sort of partnership of himself and a couple of other tailors uh, in a company called Kent, Haste and Lacta. But John Kent was the man that the Duke of Edinburgh turned to for his, I think it's rather 
you know, clear to see, traditional suits. And a remarkable thing as well, that they were so well put together that the Duke of Edinburgh never really gained or lost much weight during the course of his life. So he was fortunate to be able to call on his back catalogue of bespoke suits throughout his entire life. And it was not uncommon in the latter years to see him wearing a suit which had been tailored for him 50 or 60 years ago. And that's a sign that you're getting exceptional value out of your bespoke tailored suits. So John Kent was the man that the Duke went to for his suits, who uh, he awarded his royal warrant, and I think he did a fantastic job in tailoring the Duke, who I think always looked smart, presentable, and appropriate for the situation. So where does a British gentleman like the Duke of Edinburgh go for his shoes? Well, Prince Philip awarded his royal warrant to John Lobbs. Now, Lobbs are considered to be one of the premier shoe manufacturers in the world, and today, you know, they're in fifth generation of family control and ownership. They've been operating since 1849, and they have made shoes for the great and the good through the entirety of their existence, including people like uh, Frank Sinatra, the celebrity, um, British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, famous actor Lord Laurence Olivier, to name but a few. And they've also been seen on the feet of uh, monarchs and members of the royal family many generations ago, including King Edward VII. And that's where the Duke of Edinburgh went for his footwear. Now, when you get into bespoke shoes at that level, of course, they make a personalised last of your foot, and then the shoe is manufactured to the exact specifications of the person who's going to wear them. So, you know, these shoes last generations, decades, and I'm sure the Duke had fantastic service from John Lobb over the many years that he patronised them. So when a gentleman leaves the city for his country retreat, what does he wear? Well, the Duke of Edinburgh awarded his royal warrant to Hunter Boots. Now, Hunter is a, uh, a very well-known Wellington boot manufacturer, which has been in existence since 1856, yet introduced their famous rubber Wellington boot in 1956, a hundred years into their operation. Now, the Hunter has been worn for many years. I've owned several pairs myself, and you know they're well regarded by those who enjoy the outdoors because of their rugged robustness, and you know they're almost part of the rural sets uniform. Um, they're a good pair of boots. Of course, they've gone a little more fashion forward these days and Hunter makes a range of products, not just that traditional green uh, Wellington boot, but uh, it's fair to say they gave the Duke and I think many members of the other royal family um, fantastic service over the years too. Now, the Duke was a man who relished his time in the outdoors, spending parts of the year in Balmoral in Scotland and Sandringham in Norfolk essentially quite rural parts of the UK. Uh, so what did he wear when he was in the outdoors? Something rugged, tough? What else but the eponymous British outdoor clothing manufacturer, Barber. The wax jacket, uh, which is perfect for any sort of outdoor occasion. Uh, and interestingly, Barber is one of the very few manufacturers which has been awarded a royal warrant from all three members of the royal family who issue warrants, the Queen and also the Prince of Wales, alongside the Duke of Edinburgh. Of course, those wax cotton jackets have been made up in South Shields since, I think, 1894. And, uh, you know, they're regarded as being one of the best garments you can wear in the outdoors. I've made whole videos on this myself. I love my barber jacket. There are very few things I would prefer to wear when I'm in the outdoors other than that fantastic water repellent jacket. So where did the Duke go for his hats? Well, where else but the oldest hat shop in the world that's been in continuous family operation since 1676, James Lock & Co in London. They make some of the finest hats in the world, no, showing no compromise in their manufacturing process. Only the best materials will do, and the hats that they have produced over the years have been worn by the greats and the good, including people like Admiral Lord Nelson and 
Winston Churchill, to name but a, to a few. Now, the Duke often was seen wearing his bowler hat, particularly in ceremonial situations where he wasn't wearing a military uniform. And of course, locks were the creators of the bowler hat, uh, and you know that's probably their biggest claim to fame when it comes to the, the pantheon of hats which are still in use today. So it's locks who received the royal warrant from the Duke. Now, with a title like the Duke of Edinburgh, you know Prince Philip will have to wear a kilt from time to time. Where does he go? Where does he award his royal warrant? Where else but Kinloch Anderson, a traditional Highland dress manufacturer up in Scotland that's been in operation since 1868 and is still in sixth generation family control. Now, they specialise in designing and manufacturing Highland dress for those who require new tartan or those who require a kilt or other highland attire to be manufactured for them. There we are, those are the, the places that the Duke went to get his traditional classic British gentleman's attire. Now I think the Duke will be remembered for many things over his long and remarkable life. You know, he was a fantastic husband, a father, grandfather and great-grandfather. He was a supporter and consort to the Queen. Uh, he was a war hero. He was a man who set up initiatives like the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme, which benefited you know, generations of children. But above all, I think he was a good man, a great man, a patriot, and a person who did wonderful things for this country. His contribution to public life will never be forgotten. And there will be a big hole in this nation with his passing. I never met the Duke, as you'd expect, uh, but I was once um, in 2016 invited to a Buckingham Palace garden party in the summertime. And uh, my wife and I attended, and these are quite swish events, you know, there are 8,000 people in these garden parties, all dressed up in their pomp and splendour, their best uniforms with medals flashing in the light and, and everything. And, uh, and then they play the the, the national anthem and the Queen and whoever's attending on those particular day from the royal family will, will turn up and they will mingle with the attendees at the garden party. And I remember the, the Queen arriving with the Duke, you know, as he always was, at her shoulder supporting her. Now at the time, 2016, he was 95 years of age, uh, but there was no sign of frailty in his in his manner at all and I remember you know we watched him throughout the day as he met people and he was on his feet for a solid two and a half hours you know meeting people shaking hands and doing what members of the royal family do that's making ordinary people feel special for that brief moment and uh, you know that sticks in my mind because there was a man who did his duty Right there, at 95 years of age, he was still working as a member of the royal family. So um, I'll think of that when I think of the Duke, as well as thinking of his fantastic style and his attention to detail as a gentleman. And uh, for him, I will wish you well today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take care.